Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and this is an application I've been working on, which is a compass implemented in HTML. It's designed to run on mobile devices, uh, devices with a compass or and or a gyroscope, but it can also run on the desktop um, by uh, in this sort of desktop emulation mode. So you can click on the compass dial here, and that will um, the point where you click will be set as north. And this is done for development purposes, so I was able to do most of my development on the desktop. Obviously, my computer doesn't have a compass. Uh, but when you move this over to a mobile device, then instead of uh, listening for mouse clicks, it hooks into um, orientation change events. And we'll use the compass and or the gyroscope uh, to get to compass heading and to work the way you'd expect. It's uh, written entirely in HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. It's about probably 600 lines or so of JavaScript and uh, just a tiny bit of HTML and CSS. Um, it's uh, written using Canvas, and um, everything is uh, is drawn um, using Canvas. There is no um, there are no PNGs or JPEGs, no bitmap assets at all in this. Uh, everything's being drawn dynamically based on the size available. So you can see that when I resize my browser window, everything is uh, redrawn and resized accordingly. And even the, uh, the text size uh, changes and uh, the position of the direction and the degrees uh, text fields will move um, to sort of an optimal location. So if you're in sort of a uh, portrait mode, they're located here. But if you're in a uh, more of sort of a landscape type layout, then they go up to the corners. The reason I like building applications this way is that, um, you know, first of all, they run nicely on the desktop um, when people resize uh, their window. In this case, this application doesn't work that well on desktop, so there's really no need to run on, on desktop except for, for development purposes. However, um, it works really well on mobile devices with any screen size, so it works really nicely on you know everything from you know a big screen that you that you'd see on a tablet to a small uh, phone screen. Um, so by uh, architecting and developing an application in this manner, you can just be confident that it's going to run everywhere and do the right thing. So this is what it looks like on the desktop, and now I'll move over to a mobile device and show you how it actually functions. Okay, and this is the Compass application actually running on a device with a uh, with a compass in it. And uh, you can see that it works uh, as expected. As I move the device around, the needle swings uh, so that it's still pointing in the uh, northern direction. This is an iPhone 4. It's not an iPhone 4S, so it's not the latest and greatest. Uh, it does not have a dual-core processor, but you can see that the animation is still nice and smooth. And that's because I'm using uh, CSS, which is able to take advantage of uh, hardware acceleration and uh, do the animation in hardware. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but occasionally you'll see a little bit of a stutter in the needle. And that's due to just a little tiny bit of contention uh, because of the single-threaded nature of JavaScript. And when I run this on a dual-core device, I don't see that kind of stuttering. But it's still very, very good and very, very smooth, so I don't have a lot to complain about um, on this device. When I change the orientation, you can see that the application uh, redraws itself and lays itself out. The needle swings around. To, uh, to point in the uh, northern direction given the new orientation. And the two text fields move up to the corners to try and you know take advantage of the uh, space a little better. And uh, this is all due to the, uh, the layout logic and the scaling logic that I discussed in the desktop portion um, of the video. So no matter what size screen it's running on and no matter what resolution it's running on, uh, it'll always uh, render properly. So that's what it looks like on an iPhone 4. Let me show you a Android device now, which I have to unlock here. Okay, and this is a Motorola Zoom. And you can probably see that the, um, it's a little big, so it's hard to get in the frame here. But you can see the animation isn't quite as smooth on Android as it is on iOS. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, um, but I did have to do um, some extra work. The animation logic is actually different on Android than it is on iOS, slightly different. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm able to get um, a pretty smooth effect here, but just not quite as smooth as I see on, on iOS. Um, and there also is, there's also some sort of strange behavior, like when I reload it, you'll see there's two needles there for a minute, and then one disappears and stuff like that. But for the most part, it works quite well on Android, and I was pretty happy with the result. So the last one I want to show you is an iPad 2. And... 
the application you'll see runs really, really nicely on the iPad too. Uh, it's really fluid. And of course this is a dual core device and so you're not going to set a little bit of stuttering that you might have noticed on the iPhone 4. So it works really, really nicely. This is a really nice device and um, really great uh, hardware acceleration with CSS and really well implemented browser. Um, there's another thing I want to show you here which I really like. When I tap this button up here I can choose add to home screen and you can see that I have a uh, custom icon here in the name of the application so I'll tap add and the application is now downloaded uh, so it'll work offline and uh, accessible from the home screen. So when I tap this icon um, I want you to notice that there's the for a moment there, let me show you again, you'll see that there's the uh, startup um, image that you're used to seeing with native installed applications. So there's startup image and then the compass shows itself. So uh, for, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's pretty much indistinguishable from a native application. Um, I'm able to specify different uh, resolutions of icons here for different uh, screens. Um, for retina displays, I can have you know, higher resolution images um, and for the iPad and for you know iPhone 3GS and stuff like that, I can specify different uh, different icons. Additionally, I can specify different startup images here um, based on whether you're starting the application in landscape or portrait mode. And also, um, I can uh, um, customize the uh, startup image for the uh, resolution of the screen. So it's a really well implemented. Um, there's still a few things Apple could do, I think, to make this a little bit better. Um, but for the most part, the experience is, is really quite good. Um, the other thing that I really like about this is, even though it, it sort of uh, looks and behaves exactly like an installed application at this point, when I update the code on the server, um, it will actually, every time the application starts, it'll check for the new version of the code. And if it finds that the code has been updated, it'll pull in the new version. So I'm able to update the application um, in a, you know, sort of a web-centric way as opposed to uh, distributing the application on an app store, so it's kind of nice. So, uh, so that's the Compass application running on devices um, and uh, you know working in different orientations at different resolutions. Um, if you want to see how it's done, uh, check out the blog post or you can just go to htmlcompass.com and uh, view the source, read through the code, and maybe there's something there you can use. Thanks for watching.